The Fantasy Six-Pack Hour With your hosts Joe Bond Ah, you're awful <laughs> And A.J. Applegar It's Sin Shoo Sin Shoo Chew It's a mouthful all right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Abergarth. What's up, man? Uh, not much. Just uh, getting getting ready to pod here now that I have everything set up again and I'm not futzing with everything for the 15th, maybe 18th time. Tonight. So, yeah. By the way. Yeah, just tonight. <laughs> just tonight. Okay. You know, well, Make sure tonight. everybody's aware of that. Uh, yes. All right, man. So we got a, a good show. We're back at our position previews. If you uh, didn't catch last week's show, we had our prospect show, and it was awesome. Chris Blessing, uh, you know, uh, graces with his um, – I'm blanking on what I'm trying to say here because my computer just froze on me. It's Presence. awesome. Presence. Thank you. My computer like just froze on me, so I'm Christmas. like freaking out. Uh, anyway. Yes, it was awesome. Make sure you go back and listen. And the catcher preview show, catcher and first base preview show, was the week before that. Um, yeah, so tonight we're doing second base and shortstop, and we've got a guest to help us out there. But before we get to that, let's talk some beer, buddy. Mm, beer. What you got tonight? So I am drinking the fourth of four different types of beer that I bought for last week's show since I didn't get to this one. It is the Heavy Seas Night Swell Dark India Pale Ale. Hmm. Um, it says Fearless, Bold, Independent. Night Swells, yada, 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 nobody cares. It's a 7.5 ABV. Um, pretty good. Uh, it's... Uh, Definitely a darker IPA, not not one I'm used to drinking. I feel like, but it's got a nice a nice pretty bold flavor to it. So uh, uh, I'm liking it. I'm gonna give it a four on Untapped here. Nice man. I'll have to give that one a try. I'm going to one that I know I've had before. I'm just not sure if I've had it on the show, but it's the Ballast Point Sculpin IPA, the the original Sculpin IPA. They've got the grapefruit, and I think they've got other ones as well, but. Uh, I give this one a four and a quarter. It's just a you know, it's just a good standard IPA, man. And it's just uh, it's a little fruity. It's got a, it's got a whole bunch of different like fruit flavors mixed in. You can tell. Um, the actual description here says apricot and peach and mango and lemon. It's a bunch of stuff as well. Um, so it's it's a it's one of my favorites. And uh, yeah, I think somebody brought this to the Super Bowl party, so I'm glad they did because I got some leftovers. Nice. So. All right, man. Always, always uh, a bonus to have leftovers. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to the show here, uh, and get our guest on Tyler Thompson, longtime writer for the site. Um, you there, man? Yeah, I'm here. How's it going tonight? Good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just swell. Uh, I, uh, am definitely missing out on the, uh, beer. I, I'm in a hotel room right now and, uh, I didn't pick up any on the way over, which is a rookie mistake, but. Uh, otherwise, I'm doing pretty well tonight. Uh, Unacceptable. At, at least you know it's a rookie mistake, and we'll. Uh, I mean, is it still cool if I'm on the the show, or should I just leave? Uh, uh, I mean, I I guess you're here. You might as well stick around. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah, uh, Tyler. We'll still talk to you. Yeah. So, so Tyler, if you guys aren't you know familiar with his stuff, he does help out with the rankings on the site for fantasy baseball. Uh, in the past, he's done some of the pitcher previews. He did the prospect write up last year i think and um you know he's done some stuff this year already for for draft content as well he's he did the second base and the third base position previews but um we're gonna have him help with shortstop since the second base and shortstop is kind of mixed together a little bit better for the for the shows uh go ahead and follow him on twitter at the real and um yeah let's get into this man you ready yeah let's do it all right so second base man um you know, I'll, I'll quickly give give my <clears throat> my draft strategy when it comes to this position. You know, it's getting deeper uh, every single year. It feels like there's just a, a new crop of talent really kind of making their presence felt. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you know, in the past, it was really just like Altuve and like 
I don't know, a couple guys, right? It really wasn't anything to write home about. We got a lot of young guys that have come up and, and, and really made this position talented. I, I think, you know, it, this is one of those positions where I, it, I kind of scratch my head as to what to do. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think it'd be nice. Like, it'd be nice to have like the Altuve and above, but I think I'd be okay with kind of the middle of the road guys too. Um, the the speed of these guys don't make do, don't make a world of difference unless you're trying to go after VR and hope that he repeats last year's 40, 40 stolen bases. Um, you know, to where I, I think I'm just gonna go with one of these safer guys in the middle, like, you know, Muncie and get, you know, who's got second base eligibility on NFBC, uh, Moustakas, you know, one of these kind of more power bats in the middle and just grab some, some cheaper power later on. It's not going to crush me an average. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the right, in, in the, in the right situation, I'll absolutely go snag like a Marte or somebody like that if, if they fall to me, but I'm not going to go reach for him. Like I think a lot of people will this year. Um, do you agree or disagree with that, Tyler? Um, it, it sort of depends for me. So, you know, in my in my tier based rankings, it's you know, I, I feel like I kind of have like one guy at each tier that I that I like. So it, it's just a matter of you know what you know letting the draft come to you for 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 second base, right? Uh, in my opinion, and um, and, and you know, you, you named a few of the guys, uh, but that's uh, I think it is a position where you know, you don't necessarily have to have, you know, in like a typical Roto league, you don't have to have like that guy that has the one category that, you know, where it's power or stolen bases. You know, you can kind of, you can find a few guys at second base that are leadoff hitters. You know, they're going to get you your runs and RBIs and uh, batting average or uh, OBP. And um, those are, those are more of the guys I'm going to be probably targeting at second base. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like we we more or less agree there. We're like you're not gonna yes. go chasing second base. You're gonna let it come to you. Which which why I said I'm okay with kind of those, you know that that middle pack of guys because um, those are the guys that are probably gonna end up falling to me, like coming to me in the draft because everybody else has taken their second baseman, and so that's who's left, and they're fine. You can right. win with those guys, so it's it's perfectly fine. AJ, you got any differences there? I, I feel like pretty much this is the well, both of these positions really is is where I'm looking to try to cash in on steals if I'm if I'm going to have anybody that gets them, um, you know, along with some of the outfielders. But that is the one stat to me that I really kind of look for uh, with with this position. Um, well, second base and, and shortstop, really. But I know we're starting with uh, with the two B here. But yeah, I, same difference though. I I, I kind of like just seeing how it plays out too. Uh, I mean, some years I have just gone right out and and jumped on an Altuve or, you know, um, if if it was the right time in the draft for me. But this year I think I'm definitely going to sit and wait a little bit and and see how everything unfolds and see who's reaching for who before I jump in. All right, so next, uh, Tyler, we got um, we got a few questions, you know, player specific questions here that we want to jump into. First one up here is about DJ LeMahieu. Obviously, he had a monster twenty eighteen. Um, you know, coming into 20, 2019, sorry, um, it wasn't really sure what his role was going to be in New York. It was, you know, thought that he was going to play second or you know move over to first or maybe even play a little short. It was nobody knew, right? And then there was talk that he was just not going to play at all. Really, he was going to be a platoon player. Um, injuries helped out, and he, he got a lot of playing time. And his season was amazing. You know, his, most home runs <clears throat> um, ever for him. Uh, and you know, his previous high was like fifteen. This was twenty six last year, so a pretty big boost. Um, juiced ball playing in New York. Helped out big time, but I mean, got to remember, he guy came from cores, so it's not like he played in a, you know, bad ballpark to hit some home runs. So the power really kind of came on. Everything was good, right? I mean, just long story short, awesome. You know, is do you think that this 
power of his can continue, all these RBI, you know, that he's kind of locked into playing time in New York or, or is this kind of an outlier and, and people are paying up a little too much for him? Uh, that's man. That's a, that's like a great question out of the, out of the gate there. Um, you're welcome. It's, it's um, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's funny because after, I mean, after the season he had and um, you know, I was kind of expecting him to go super high, but like the, the draft community sort of like adjusted to like a disappointment because um, uh, I think he's going like fifth or sixth round uh, typically. Um, you know, I, I'm also expecting a decline probably across the slash line. Um, you know, as you're saying, the move from Coors to uh, to New York uh, and, you know, he, he has he runs a bad of, of almost 400, which, you know, he, he's run a high he's run high bad like across his career. But yeah, he's a solid hitter. I mean, I'm not going to deny oh, that yeah. ever. But, you know, 400 Babbitt, and we're talking about a guy that's, you know, lost speed or doesn't want to steal bases anymore. So, um, and one of the two things. So, um, it, like, yeah, I mean, fifth, sixth round, sixth round is probably okay to take him. Um, and, you know, if, if it's 20 home runs and he's still giving you that run production and that high batting average, it, it's going to work out. But um, I've got guys that I'm targeting. I mean, think about a guy like Jeff McNeil who could easily put up very similar – stats to what you know to what LeMahieu does and he's going mm-hmm. three rounds later so uh, you know that's that's kind of where I'm and we you know we talked about you know letting the draft come to you and everything and that's kind of where I'm seeing myself going it's like oh I could just I could draft DJ here but I could draft McNeil in the eighth round instead and that sounds a little nicer but um yeah that's it's kind of my thoughts on LeMahieu it's like not really anything strong but I'm probably not gonna have any shares Yeah, I think I agree with you. I, I I I doubt I will have him unless he falls a couple rounds, which seems doubtful at this point. Um, but I don't know, AJ. You got anything else? Yeah, just same thing. I, I just I think a lot of a lot of these stats are, are trumped up, you know, or these power stats at least. So it he is a good hitter. He's had the average over the years. Um, I think 2018 was kind of his outlier, but I, I know he felt fought some injuries and whatnot, had a shortened season. So uh, I'll, I'll give him a bit of a pass there, but I mean, it's just, it, it's almost crazy to go from one hitters park to another hitters park and then just have that big of an increase. Um, so I, I could definitely sense a bit of regression for, for DJ this year. So I probably won't own him, though. I think people are going to be jumping on him early and often as well. So let's move on to our next question here, Tyler. Uh, in 2019, Mr. Kettle Marte played in nine less games than he did in 2018, but his counting stats saw a massive increase. His runs went from 68 to 97, homers from 14 to 32, ribbies from 59 to 92, Stolen bases, whatever, were still kind of minimal, six to ten, but you know, still double digits now. Um, but his average was two sixty to three twenty nine. So, which Marte are are we expecting to see in twenty twenty? So, I, I wrote about Marte in the uh, second base position preview, um, shameless plug, and. I, I don't know. I, I started to do a, a deep dive on him. Like on the surface, I'm like, okay, you know, looking at like surface history and uh, just like, okay, like this is going to be a, an easy one. I'm going to be like, okay, you know, don't draft Marte this high. It's not going to be worth it. But I started looking at sort of the underlying stats and I freaking love Marte this year. Um, and this is a guy that, I, you know, I was talking about, I have guys in each tier that, um, you know, I'd really try to attack. And Marte in the fourth round is someone I'm, you know, really going after this year. So right that um, a few, <laughs> a yeah. few, a few <laughs> stats that, in fourth. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Damn it. Uh, hopefully <laughs> we nobody all are in this. the same league. Careful what you say yes. on this show. That's yeah, right. that's right. That's right. Uh, actually, hey, we're here for the people. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a few stats real quickly. Uh, so he's a switch hitter, 975 plus OPS against righties and lefties. That's pretty nice. Um, only one month under a 140 
weighted, run, weighted runs created plus um, over 2019. So he didn't have any slumps hardly. Um, StatCast data suggests that he made a huge jump against uh, breaking balls and uh, just uh, off-speed pitches in general. Um, so, I, like, you know, everything here just tells me, hey, guy entering his prime, <clears throat> figuring figuring out – um, and you know, the Diamondbacks offense is, uh, actually sneaky good. So, yeah. um, yeah, I'm loving Marte coming into, coming into 2020 for sure. I mean, so you think like the fact that he, you know, you, you're just thinking like he made an adjustment in his swing, was able to hit breaking balls better. And, and so like maybe not 32 home run power good, but like it's, it's still for real. It's better than 14 it's all, from the year before. Right. So correct. Cool. All right. Good, good to know. I, you know, I'm still kind of on the fence with Marte. You know, I, I never like to buy into the one year, you know, outbreak. Sure. Like that, it, it's tough to buy in because man, you get burned a lot more than than you, you know, reap the benefits of it. But speaking of <clears throat> one year breakouts, this guy's now done it twice. Our good friend Jonathan VR. Um. You know, back in 2016, those stats aren't on the page here, but back in 2016 for the Brewers, you know, guys sold 60-some bases, hit like 19 home runs or something crazy like that. It just monster season, came back and severely disappointed. Um, 2018 was, was better, not great. Traded to the Orioles halfway through the year, was better for the Orioles. And then last year happened. Well, he almost went twenty five forty. Just missed it by one home run. Twenty four uh, was was a monster. Let's put it that way. Like pretty much, you know, crushed it the last two and a half months of the season. Uh, he was he was good in the first half of last year, but he was you know re- like top notch good. And and I think uh, according to ESPN, he finished as like the number one second baseman in all of baseball last year, according to their player Raider. Um, I don't know if other sites had it that way or not, but I do remember seeing that on ESPN and be like, wow. Okay. Um, so anyway, I mean, <clears throat> he's moving to Miami and I know a lot of people are just gonna say, Oh, well, he's moving to that Miami offense. Like guys, do you remember how bad the Orioles offense was last year? Uh, the, the offense can't be possibly that much worse. Um, that being said, you know, I think it's arguably a worse, ballpark not arguably it is a worse ballpark even though they're moving in the fences i mean what do what do we think about vr this year like are we thinking he can steal almost 40 bases again and hit 15 to 20 home runs or are we looking at more like what he did in 2017 where it was get this guy off the field because he's actually hurting the team so tyler Oh, okay. I was yeah, gonna AJ jump in there. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> uh, you're good. Yeah, um, so you know, look at Miami making cute moves. Uh I, I'm like required to say that as a Braves fan. Um <laughs> uh, okay. yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's uh it's interesting because I'd like to see where he was on the player raider for um for twenty eighteen. I, I did not look that up. I'm sorry. But because, um, I mean I think he can give you Fairly similar numbers to the, to that. And, I mean, you're still getting 35, 40 stolen bases uh, if you're looking at 160-game uh, pace, 155-game pace. Um, and, you know, 260, 270 batting average. And I, I don't know that that's worth um, where he's going right now, which is the fourth round. I know mm-hmm. last year he was more like a 10th rounder, um, and that was after an injury-shortened short, season. But um, but still, you know, I think we've, I think we've overcorrected to the fourth round. Um, and it's kind of, it kind of sucks because, uh, he would definitely be, um, you know, a perfect stolen base target. I, you know, mm-hmm. it's same, same thing with Lomeco. I'm just not going to have any shares because he's going in the fourth round, but, um, yeah, I wish, I wish he was going like sixth round. Then we'd be talking a little more, but, um, yeah, I'm probably, probably out. Yeah. I mean, it, there's no, there's no doubt, you know, <laughs> if you've read, I think I've been hit up by Fantasy Pros twice to pick like a I need to pick a different player next time, picking like an overvalued guy or like a bust. It's been VR both times, so I'm gonna pick somebody else next time if they ask me a similar question. But <laughs> I, look, I, I paid for him last year in a fantasy six pack league, and it you know, I, it worked out. But my team was set up to where I didn't I didn't need 
the power from him. I got it, but I didn't need it. I needed the speed to really kind of put me over the top. And I was banking on the fact that he was so good with the Orioles in the second half of 2018. I was hoping he would like duplicate that. And he did that. And then some, um, but I, I don't think he's going to hit, you know, almost 25 bombs again in Miami. Um, you know, the, the one thing, you know, you know, I think we get from him and that people are going to probably get disappointed is that like the counting stats won't be there, right? He's not going to score 111 runs again. Um, he probably won't hit 73 RBI again. Like he's not that kind of player. Um, so yeah, you know, you might get the steals, but at what cost, you know, I, I don't like to pick the guys that are basically just, you know, steals and that's kind of it because, you know, you've got to pay up like, and you will for VR this year, right? You've got to pay up for the 35, 40 steals because it is so rare and so valuable, but then you're, you're really hurting yourself. You're putting yourself behind the eight ball in the runs in the RBI category, unless you've just, unless you just crush it the rest of the way, which not everybody can do. So I try to still try not to put myself behind the eight ball when it becomes, you know, when you're talking about that early, you know, first five, six rounds of the draft, picking a guy like this, who's almost a zero in those, in those categories. So, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, I, I loved having him here in Baltimore. He was, he was just a monster for us. It was really the only, you know, aside from maybe Trey Mancini and a couple other random games from a couple other random guys, um, you know, he was the offense. So, I think that he'll still be able to have, you know, good average and, and obviously steals, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to pay up for, for this price for another crappy team that he's going to be on. So uh, I'll pass on, on VR this year as well, unless he just falls some ridiculous amount and nobody's buying into him then, then maybe, but all right. So moving on here, um, in just over half a season of baseball in the majors last year, Kesson Hiora mashed for the Brew Crow. Uh, if given a full year's workload, are you expecting the continued solid production out of him, or is he going to fall victim to the sophomore slump? What do you think, Tyler? Well, if, uh, if the projection systems are correct, then uh, I'm probably going to miss out on, like, a great freaking player this year. <laughs> um, it, you know, just another instance of sort of the market going too high on on someone that I, that I like. Um, you know, here he is going in the same, you know, sort of area as Mart- Keto Marte, and I just I – can't, I can't find any reason to, to make that move, like to pick here over Marte, unless, like, I'm just – so happy with my first three picks and I, I, I don't know, it, it would, it would never happen, but I, I like, there's just, there's a lot of red flags that I think people are sort of overlooking just because he, I mean, he could potentially be a generational player, but you know, we're looking at a guy that was running 30% strikeout rates in, in the minors and, and like certainly last year too, I think he was over, I think it was like 34% strikeout rate or something. Um, very high bad up uh, stat cast had his uh, expected average at like 260 or 270 and his actual average was like 330 or something in those 80 something games so um, you know I'm, I'm gonna have definite FOMO but I'm gonna play it safe hmm. basically on here this year yeah any thoughts Joe yeah I mean it's another one of those guys where you know yeah he, he performed out of the gate and it well but I mean Tyler hit everything on the head. Like there's just so many supporting stats to say he, the struggle could, could come quick for him. And you could see like a long, you could see like really long cold streaks from this guy because of the strikeout rate. And like, it's hard to predict, you know, it's hard to get a bad bip that high consistently, you know, we see guys do it, but it's like the proven players that you believe in it. Right. The trouts, the guys like that. Um, I don't know. He's in it. He's in a tier of second baseman that I'm, I look at him and I go, <coughs> sorry. Um, well, that too, but you, you know, <laughs> well, uh, you know <laughs> he, he's just in a tier of second baseman that you look at and you go, 
why am I taking him over the guys who might be more proven? You know, I I don't think he's gonna suck, but this is kind of like, do you trust him more than you do Marte, or you know those guys? So it's it's a tough situation, but with those guys, and again, there's a lot of question marks up top at second base for me, to where that's why I think I'm willing to wait. You know. Yeah, I, I think that I'd much rather sit another, you know, 10 or so spots and, and go after Whit Merrifield. Like that to me is an easy decision um, or or even maybe go after a LeMahieu, which, like I said, I don't think I'm going to own him anywhere. But if it got to that point where I felt like I needed to reach and get somebody, I might just wait around and see if, if any of those more proven commodities are there. So, fair enough, fair enough. All right, man. So, <clears throat> Tyler, we end up, we end our every position with doing our overvalued and our undervalued players at the position. So, give us your overvalued second baseman right now. Somebody who's being drafted higher than you think they should right now. So, we already mentioned uh, LeMahieu and VR, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll pass on those guys. Um, and you know, we we really have touched on a lot of the guys in like the top ten. So I'm going to go outside the top ten actually, sure. and uh, pick uh, Eduardo Escobar. Like I don't know, I don't know that that's like a name that's like flashy enough to be overvalued, but um, he gives me sort of like a Marwin Gonzalez vibe. Uh, from remember from like a few years ago where Marwin Gonzalez yeah. was the guy, and it was like utility guy. You know, he has all these different. Uh, you know, position eligibility and all that. Well, minus the trash cans, of course. Um, we can, uh, you know, the, the the banking of the trash cans and everything. But um, yeah. So just the playing time is going to be interesting in Arizona. I mean, you've got Marte. Uh, they just signed Nick Ahmed to a you know multi year contract. He's going to play every day at short. Um, Christian Walker, David Peralta, they just traded for Star and Marte. They got Cole Calhoun. So now you're looking at, okay, really, there's only one spot for Escobar to play. And like, okay, third base is his spot, but are they, you know, what do they do with guys like Jake Lamb or um, Dalton Varsho who, who could be coming up? Uh, Kevin Crone is, is a good player. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think there's a lot of uh, talent there in, in Arizona. And, you know, he could, he could end up being like just a utility guy, sort of plays – four or five times a week and then you're like well crap you know i just locked him into my roster for half a week and he only played <laughs> twice I, I don't know it, it just uh you know breakouts as a 30 year old uh, yeah i don't know i just i'm i'm not not falling for that one yeah i, I don't know he, he's he's one of those guys that i think honestly for me like if he falls to me late you know if i miss on all the rest then i'm fine with him but yeah it's not He's not sexy by any means. Tenth, so. tenth, I mean, tenth round. I, <clears throat> like, I don't know. I just there, there are a ton of guys after that that I'm going to be just dying to get. So sure. All right, Adrian, who you got? All right. Well, I uh, had had uh, Mr. Escobar written down as well. <laughs> <All right>. So <laughs> one for one in steals. Um, <laughs> kudos. Uh, I'm I'm actually going to go with uh, with Tommy Edmond here for St. Louis. Now I. I believe his natural position is third base here but he's he's got second base eligibility and he's coming in right at uh 135 136 ish so you know maybe around around round 11 or so um round 12 ish it's still fairly late but i mean i don't I don't really see what the point is for this guy. I mean, they're, they're already saying he's going to serve as like a super utility uh, to start the season. So hopefully, you know, he'll get more playing time, but uh, you know, I mean, he had a crazy OPS last year. That's probably going to fall though. Uh, I mean, dude's only 24, but you know, 11 homers, 59 runs is pretty nice. Um, you know, and he, he does get some steals, but I think really his best commodity is the average right there. So I just don't, I don't, I don't see it with him yet. I'd rather have a known commodity myself. <clears throat> we got Joe. 
Yeah, I like that one. So mine's going to be um, Kevin, Kevin Biggio. I don't know if that's his first name. Uh, I should look that one up before we started the show, too, but I wasn't ready for it. <clears throat> like, I mean, the guy, the guy, you know, came up last year. Um, it, like, he played well, right? I mean, 100 games, went 16, 14 stolen bases. I think he could be valuable. Um, I think people are overreacting to, you know, him potentially – you know, being a, a 25, 25 player, right. Um, or, or whatever people think he's going to be. I just don't see it, man. Like we're talking about strikeout rate. I mean, he struck out almost 30% of the time. Um, his bad bip was, was over 300, but not like super high. Um, you know, I'm not really sure. I, I believe the the power either. Uh, I mean, the slugging percentage was, was like four and a quarter. I don't know, man. The, the batting average being really low, will it will it improve? Sure. He walks a lot, so that, that helps, you know, get him on you know on base to steal. But I, I see him more as like a <clears throat> excuse me, as more of like a I don't know, maybe like a twenty fifteen guy. He's going as like the thirteenth second baseman right now. I think there's a bunch of other dudes after him that, that I'd I'd rather take a chance on than somebody who really wasn't a big, you know, a big name coming up besides the fact that he is a Biggio, right? <laughs> there's just, you know, there's some other guys like, I, I just, I don't know. Honestly, I'd much rather take, you know, a round earlier and just take Escobar. Cause like you, you know, if the playing time is there for Escobar, you're, you're going to get that, you know, you're going to get stats from him. Um, there's just something about Biggio that I'm going like, I'm not really sure why there's this like massive hype on him all of a sudden, but anyway. Um, all right, Tyler, what's the uh, what's your undervalued? So uh, I mean, you're you're just saying there that you know the the hype is really uh, caught up on on Biggio guys guys like Biggio, you know Gavin Lux, uh, Jeff McNeil, but uh, the, the guy I want to talk about hasn't really got that hype despite being like a fantasy monster in 80 games last year. And that's uh Brandon Lau um, for the Rays. So uh, right now, roster resource has him uh, leading off and, and that may just be against righties because, you know, the Rays do screw things with their lineup, but he, he's going to play every day. There's, there are no second base alternatives uh, right now, unless they dip into some of their minor league talent at the double Ohio level, but uh, one guy in particular, but um, as far as right now, he's got every day uh, at bats, and, and you look at some of the stats. I mean, I talked about earlier about uh, Hiria and how you know sort of the strikeout rates um, were were sort of alarming and, and everything. But here's a guy that has those strikeout rates. I think he's getting devalued because they're so high. Um, and he, you know, he he definitely has 30 home run uh, power in, in his uh, in his range of outcomes this year, and you know, eight to 10 stolen bases. And that's sort of like a poor man's area, right? Um, it's maybe 250, 260. So, um, you know, if, he, if he's, I mean, I mean, if he's producing in four categories for you, and then um, that's, I mean, where, where is he being taken right now? Uh, one, wait, <laughs> almost, almost 200. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's, <laughs> that's pretty, I mean, that's, that's crazy. Like eight, 17th, 18th round or whatever. So um, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm loving what I see there. All right. Well, I was worried with the way you were talking. You were gonna, you were gonna snake my guy again, but <laughs> you did not. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad for that. Uh, I'm actually gonna go one spot ahead of him though, and go with uh, Kevin Newman of Pittsburgh. He's coming in right around 194th um, pick. So I mean, like this is a guy who hit 308 had 61 runs, 12 homers, 64 ribbies, and 16 stolen bases. And, you know, that was that was in just under 500 uh, at-bats. So I definitely think that he can get more bats. He's going to be uh, leading off for Pittsburgh is, is what roster resource has shown for him as well. So, you know, the, the ribby numbers hopefully can stay around the same, um, you know, or, or – increase about the same percentage of you know as his uh his at bats do um but anytime you can get 
that kind of an average that late it's it's just an absolute win in in roto and in category leagues so that's the kind of guy that i i love targeting late where i can find those extra category you know hits that are gonna really help out my team overall if i have you know misses on on certain categories with specific guys early on who you got for undervalued joe uh i'll be honest uh, I'm. I've had trouble with picking one here. I'm going back and forth on a bunch of guys that I'm just kind of like eh, about, and maybe this is just kind of my overall feeling on this position for some reason. Um, I have a feeling I will absolutely take one of the top twelve, top ten. It sounds like maybe maybe no later than top like fifteen, because after that I'm not feeling a whole lot afterwards. But. A guy who I think could really surprise um, is Ison Diaz for the for the Marlins. I mean, this guy's going to get his chance this year. It sounds like um, he came up and struggled last year. You know, one seventy three average, but um, you know he he was hitting three oh five last year in AAA. Uh, and just mashing the ball. I mean, he obviously came up and didn't really quite do that, but uh, still played overall well. You know, didn't light the world on fire. But um, I mean, this guy was playing well. He's free in drafts at this point. Like you can get him, pick five hundred fifty six. <laughs> so he's free, guys. You don't even have to draft him. Just wait till afterwards. Let him get a hot start. Uh, you know, or maybe take a super chance on him if you have an IR player. See what happens, right? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we're not talking about him in in, uh, in early April as, as somebody who's like kind of making a name for himself. So, my shot in the dark pick there, but uh, again, I'm not I'm, for some reason just not feeling the second baseman. I kind of agree with a lot of the ADP. Unfortunately, is I think what was happening to me yeah. when I was looking through it. It's kind of like, oh no, that's about right. No, okay, that's about right. So I, I just went super deep and was like, well, screw it. <laughs> All right, let's move on to some shortstop. Now, this is a position that I love this year, guys. Um, second baseman or shortstop. They are super, super deep. This position has totally done a 180 from just it feels like two years ago. Um, lots of young talent has come in. Really, really boosted this this uh, position up, you know, you look at the top, right? Lindor and Turner's and story and, you know, Bregman, Tatis, Monacy, Torres, all these guys are young, all of them, uh, you know? And so, I mean, it, it's so deep that even like Manny Machado is like 10, 11, right. In rankings. That's crazy. And he's a super good player. Um, I will likely take one of these top guys. And I mean top, like I will probably have one of the top five guys on my team. I'm hoping because they are superstars. They can carry your team. Um, You know, if, but if you do happen to miss, I mean, you look at the next couple of tiers, right? You go maybe take a chance on a Bo Bichette who we'll talk about. Uh, Marcus Simeon was really, really good last year. Tim Anderson was really, really good last year. And these guys are like outside the top 15, some of them. Um, it It's just crazy deep. I mean, if you want to take a chance on like a Carlos Correa or, you know, a Corey Seager who were once like big name power or, um, you know, proven to be su- superstars, right? They've kind of had injury history, so their stock has slipped a lot. Like those guys, I wouldn't be one bit surprised if they top five shortstop at the end of the year, right? If they are healthy and they perform like they're supposed to, it's all there, guys. Like this is a deep, deep, deep pool of players. So, you know, yes, I think those top guys are superstars, and those are the ones you want to target um, if you possibly can. If not, there's so many out there that are going to be good for you. And, and really like, you know, you fill your middle infield, you fill your utility spots, you can fill it. Usually it's your, you know, you fill your utility with like a power bat with like from the outfield or something like that. 
shortstop is now one of those positions that I'm going to look at when it comes to filling my utility spot because there's so many good players. Um, Tyler, you got anything else to add to that one? No, no, I, you you hit you hit all the all the keynotes there. <laughs> right. I I agree pretty much completely. I, I mean, I think it's yeah, it's it's incredibly deep, and, and there's guys you know like you were saying, Corey Seager. I mean, Carlos Correa. These guys are going outside the top 100 picks, and they used to be like fourth and fifth rounders. It's, Carlos it's, Correa was like a first rounder after his rookie year. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, how nuts is yes. that? Seager was like a second, third round player. It's just like these guys and Machado, right? Two years ago, was a first round player. Uh, yeah. Last year, probably a second round player. He's yep. Now it's like the tenth shortstop off the board. It's it's nuts. So there's so much talent here. It's incredible to look at. Yeah, this this position is is huge this year. Um, I mean. I definitely want one of these top top guys as well, just to to lock it in. And then you know, depending on my leagues, I do play in some leagues that still don't use middle infield as a position. But I agree with you, hundred percent, Joe. I'll I'll take a second guy as my utility player, and maybe a third guy as my second utility player yeah. in one of the leagues. It's like, why not? you have the space for these guys and, and they're all going to perform. So I, I love this position this year too. Yeah, absolutely, man. So one of the guys that we mentioned, Tyler, Fernando Tatis Jr. Monster, monster. Uh, uh, first year in the majors, 22 home runs, 53 RBI, 61 runs, stole 16 bases, batted 317, uh, and that was just in 84 games, 372 plate appearances. Um, you know, ha- had a little bit of injury trouble, but I mean, Seamer loves this guy. NFBC loves this guy. I mean, what what are we feeling for for Tatis this year? And, and, and is he somebody you're buying into his ADP? Uh, it's, it's one of those things I would prefer to be for him to be in the third round, but you know, everyone would. So that's like a really dumb comment to make. Um, (laughs) but like, I would love to have like one forced share of Tatis at least for currently going, which is like the, the, you know, the front part of the the second round, um, if the opportunity presented itself, um, you know, my, my rankings and my sort of ranking system would say, God, no, don't do it. But, you know, it, like the guy has number one overall player in his, you know, within his within his reach. Um, definitely got like an Acuna type of uh, game to him. And, you know, we saw what we, the guy did last year. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be one of those things where like I'm just going to I'm just going to reach it on him in the second round just to do it in one of my drafts and then be done with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if I if I will, uh, but it'll be tempting, man. I mean, I, you know, I was talking about you and in, in our dynasty. Well, let's just call it a keeper league. It's not really a dynasty league, but in that, you know, large keeper league that we're both in, somebody wanted bets off of me and they offered me Tatis and like somebody else. And I, then I was tempted to do it. I mean, I was like, you know, bet, at that point I didn't know where bets was going. Uh, so, and luckily he landed in LA and I think everything's going to be okay for bets. But, uh, it's Probably. one of those things where it's like, you know, I, I can, I think bets is going to be good for a few more years, but I could get Tatis, um, for super cheap in that league. And he's what? 20, is he 22? But he's super young. Like it's, I get him forever in that league. Right. And so it was a tough one, man, but I, I just ultimately, you know, my team's good now and I went, I just kept bets because I think he's going to be the overall better player. But yeah, I mean, the price is a little high for me on, on Tatis. But if I was in like five or six leagues, I'd probably just take a stab at him in one league. Just for, why the hell not? I I kind of agree with you there. What do you, what do you got, AJ? Yeah, I, not much more to add. I definitely like his upside, um, and I might I might definitely go after him in in a couple of leagues just for the hell of it. Why not? <laughs> um, like I said, if I can lock this position up early with with one of these top studs, I definitely want to do it, and then just just take another one later, just to have it. 
So, um, but speaking of youngsters, let's move on to uh, Bo Bichette. He also saw a pretty quick success last season. In 46 games, he had 11 homers, 32 runs, 21 ribbies, and four steals, all while hitting 311. Um, he's going quite a bit later than Tatis, though. Um, but there's some some players out there, or uh, you know, experts out there, that like Bichette more long term than Tatis. Um, are you one of them, Tyler? No, but uh, I will say more words. Um, the, <laughs> so it's funny. Like, well, I, I would prefer. Bichette at his ADP than Tatis. So, like, if you want to play that game, uh, then sure. sure. But um, it, it's 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 really funny looking at Bichette's uh, stolen base projections across all the different projection systems. So, like, the bat and ATC have him at 17 steals in 145 games. Mm-hmm. And then depth charts, which is, like, Steamer and Zips put together, I think, um, has it at 28 steals. Um, it, it's, like what that's that's a 10 stolen base difference that could be the difference between you know him being a top five shortstop and uh you know barely cracking the top 10 but um i i tend to believe that he could i mean i think some of those other ones are underrating his stolen base potential and it's not like toronto is gonna tell him not to like what are they what are they really playing for this year so um like well i like the top half of their offense it's you know they're behind some powerhouses in the AL East, but um, yeah, I, I think I think Bichette could be one of those sneaky thirty stolen base guys that you could get um, for a couple rounds later than VR um, that that nobody's talking about, uh, or maybe they are, and I'm just not seeing it anywhere. But I think he could easily steal thirty and hit twenty, and they, like we know where that's going to end up getting you drafted the next year, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I mean, I, I definitely like his ADP better as well. I mean, I think that's a, a kind of a dumb statement because I think all of us will agree with that. But um, yeah, I mean, the stats, uh, I, I like I like where the projections are headed for it. Um, kind of su- surprising to see, you know, only doubling of the home run total in basically three times as many at-bats. But I mean, I could see it, I guess. Um, I, I just feel like 22 might be might be a little low. I think he could be closer, you know, higher higher 20s. But other than that, I, I think the average um, probably will level off. And, uh, you know, I, he's young. He's talented, and it's it's a talented team. There's a lot of... A lot of young talent right there around him with with Biggio and and uh, Guerrero. So I mean, it's it's they might as well just be called the Toronto Blue Juniors, um, and and just go from there. All right, let's move on. You guys have pretty much said everything about him, so we're gonna move on to the next guy here. Not a rookie, not a second year guy. We're gonna go with Javi Baez. Um, Mr. Almost MVP in 2018. Everybody expected a little bit of regression in 2019, and and we got just that. Although, if you look a little deeper, like you know, he had the injury. You know, he was on pace for you know about the same number of home runs, if not more. Um, RBI in, in runs, I think we're going to be a little less. The steals was the big thing that went down along with the average. Um, yeah, it, it's. You know, he was he was a, a first second round pick last year in a lot of leagues and, and now he's going much much later you know we're, we're talking you know 41 off the board ninth ninth overall shortstop I mean that, that pretty much tells you how stacked this this position is when within the first four rounds you're getting nine or ten shortstops taken off the board um I mean what what do you think like is the 2019 version of Baez the one that we're gonna be looking at here or is the could he start creeping more toward the 2018 version of, of Javi Baez uh Tyler what do you think I mean really I mean he, he gets sort of like he gets a bad rep for being like inconsistent but really 2018 2019 were really similar stuff I mean like almost 
crazy similar stats. And uh, like you said, other than the, the stolen bases and, um, you know, missing some games. But uh, you got to think – I think he had a, a heel injury in, like, June or something like that. I think he tried to play yeah, through yeah. it, man. I think it affected him. Yeah, that was a bad call. Yeah. Wait. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. But, uh, I mean, you don't think that affected his stolen base? Output. Oh, no. Absolutely. No, but, yeah, that that too. I mean, he's also, like, you know, the, the, he also gets pegged as, like, a, a super aggressive hitter. And so, like, the strikeout rate's super sure. high. But, like, dude, when he hits the ball, he hits the ball. Like, That's right. There are guys like him that can get around a almost 30% K rate because when he makes contact, it matters. Um, and so that – but, you know, it's just a matter of when is that going to catch up to him. So – and I think people are, you know – they expected it to last year, and it kind of started to. There were times where you were like, "Man, Baez is just playing terrible baseball right now." Um, so I don't know. There's there's a, a big like cloud over his head when it comes to the industry, and like people, they just don't buy into him for some reason. But I think he's one of those guys. Like, if he really is the ninth one off the board, thank you. <laughs> Four, yeah, fourth round. Yeah, that's a that's a perfect spot. Yeah. So, because he gives you a lot, um, yeah. despite having a thirty percent K rate. I mean, he's batting almost three hundred. That's pretty incredible. So, yeah, I I think the only the, you know the only other reason that maybe he fell a little bit more this year is because he did lose some position eligibility. But yeah, that doesn't help him. I, I mean, it, it's it 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 hurts a little because this was already a deep position. So maybe you weren't necessarily looking at him for your shortstop, but now you can, and it's like, okay, well, if you guys don't want him, then I'll, I'll gladly scoop him up here uh, in the fourth round. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. All right, let's close it out here, Tyler. Give us your overvalued shortstop for the 2020 season. So uh, speaking of guys who um... – hit the ball really hard and don't take walks. Um, I'm going to go with uh, Tim Anderson here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you know, won the, won the AL batting title uh, last year with a 335 batting average. But, um, you know, I was watching an interview with him on MLB, MLB network and he, I mean, he just flat out said, they asked him like, Hey, you, you know, your walk rate's so low. Have you done anything off season? He's like, hell no. Like this is this is the player I am, and like yeah. part of me loves it. Part of me loves that. Like if I was a White Sox fan, but as a fantasy guy, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> so like okay. But uh, you know, I, 400 bad of it, it's uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be super interesting. I, and like you know, he, he's just within the top 100, and you know, I'm probably gonna be taking one of these shortstops above him, and then like sort of passing on that range of shortstop. And maybe you know drop him back in for a middle infield um, or utility guy afterward. But yeah, that's that's sort of the tier that I'm just gonna you know, and it starts with Tim Anderson that I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. Uh, we all we all know I, I I'm I love Tim Anderson. <laughs> it's a big joke last year. I hated on him so much, and then uh, <laughs> so you're not, not gonna call that again. Then you're he's gonna like, me, you're gonna you let me fall on it. I listen to those podcasts, pal, and uh, I don't appreciate it. Hey, if I if I made Tim Anderson a better player, then uh, I don't know, man. I should win some damn award for that. Anyway. I think I heard your name in the MLB Network interview. Yeah, right. right? That yeah. Joe Bond, man, he was just trashing me. He had to show you. him. I had to prove him wrong. That'd be awesome. I did the bat flip just because of him. It wasn't actually the Royals pitcher. <laughs> Uh, All right, to- who- totally who- off topic, but since you mentioned MLB Network, Tyler, uh, it, are either you guys fans of Impractical Jokers? Uh, I mean, I've I seen it from time to time, but yeah. Okay. Well, there there is an episode where uh, the one guy's punishment. So basically, they it's these four friends from you know growing up and whatever, and they just bust each other's balls and make make each other do stupid shit on, on the show. So at the end of it, whoever loses gets this punishment and they have to do everything that the other guys tell them to do. So he had to do a hundred pushups, uh, on the stage with, um, for MLB network. And it was, I think it was like Mark DeRosa and, uh, 
Carlos Pena, maybe, um, were just doing this interview and they had no idea what was going on with this. They're just like, <laughs> who, who's this guy? Like, he's in a shot, man. Get him out of the shot. And he's just in the back, like, Ugh, doing all these push ups. He had to hit a hundred of them and he did end up hitting it. So it was, it was just it's impressive, episode. actually. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Well, it was damn impressive. So you'll have to you'll have to go look that one up. But uh, shout out to Practical Jokers. Anyway, um, so my my overvalued player here is uh, Trey Turner. Um, I, I mean, he's he's what like the second shortstop off the board typically. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I just. The, the the short sort of start of it is that I like a lot of these guys right behind him. You know, I, I like Story this year. I like Bregman. You know, I like Tatis. Um, I, I I feel like I'd rather go after one of those guys than than go after Turner. Um, obviously, he's had a checkered injury history. We all know that. Um, the average is is there. You know, it, he he definitely helps you there. Um, you know, he sagged for a couple of years. Um, but last year he he was back up close to 300, so that's that's nice. Huge stolen base guy. I mean, but I, I can't pay for for the stolen bases and possible injury with a first round pick. Uh, I just I can't do it. Um, you know, he's never hit more than than 19 homers, um, which is still a good number. But you have these other guys that are right behind him that are mashing the ball and getting you the homers. Um, and, and their RBIs too. So I, I just can't, I can't deal with Turner. Yeah. I feel with him. I, I, he will not be a target of mine in the first round. I will probably pick the guy after him in my, he's up there in the ranks because everything says you have to rank him that high, but he's got one of those little yeah. red asterisks next to his name for me in the rankings. And I just don't take him. Um, the injury history doesn't help him, but you know, you mentioned like 19 home runs, right? I mean, he hit 19 last year in 122 games. So you got to figure if he had a full year, he'd kill it. But yeah, true. But you know, at the same time, the year before he hit 19 in 162 games. So like, okay, now what? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, and, and everybody he, was hitting homers last year. So yeah. I, are we still going to see that much juice this year? We don't know he's yet. He's a, in my opinion, he's he's. He's like uh he's like a VR and a half. Um but you pay for it because everybody everybody for some reason expects Turner to like turn into this like 30 home, you know 25 home run 50 stolen base guy and I'm not sure it's ever coming. Um he's 26 going into his prime. I could be totally wrong. I think the talent's there. I just think he's too injured for me to to risk that in the first round. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of feel on that. So mine is um, Marcus Simeon, and it's one of the guys that we had like kind of knocked around bringing up in the show. Uh, I did write about him in the shortstop preview. Um, shameless plug. And go, Tyler. You're not the only one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like, I mean, let's be real about this guy. Uh, he hit 33 last year, 33 home runs. You know, the year before, 15? Um, okay. Yeah, you know, he hit 27 in 2016. But, like, other than that, I mean, he's been kind of sitting in the teens for his, his power. Um, you know, the steals are good. The steals, the steals are going to be okay. Looking like a double-digit guy pretty much year in and year out. But, you know, he's not like a 20 guy. You know, he's not going to – he's going to help you in steals because any steals are good at this point because not a lot of people get them. But – He's not a game changer with stolen bases. Um, you know, yeah, the, the offense is good. So the counting stats should probably still be pretty high, but I'm not sure we're ever going to see 123 and 92 again. Now, nobody's paying for that this year. There is a lot of regression built into his numbers, but I still think he's going slightly too high for me to where there's just, there's too much like, I'm afraid the bottom could fall out and we're going to get more of the 2017, 2018 Simeon than where even the projections have him where it's in the mid 20 for home runs. And like, you know, some, some sites have him near 
some projection systems have him near 100 runs scored. I'm just not sure it's there. So that's mine. Tyler, All what right. you got for Fair undervalued? Enough. There are a lot of routes that I wanted to go here. Um, you know, you talked about Manny Machado being the 11 shortstop off the board. That's crazy. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, uh, you know, another guy I like is, uh, well, you know, I'll save it for the end just in case it's he's one of your guys. But um, I'm going to go with uh, Jorge Polanco here um, for the Twins. I like that. Um, you know, I have, I have him in the same tier as Tim Anderson, but he's going like way, way like 50 picks later. And I, like, that's, that's the guy I'm going to be targeting a, a guy like that for my, for my middle infield spot. Um, you know, r- right around like Corey Seager and uh, Didi Gregorius, Paul DeJong, like some of those guys, but you no, know, Paul Polanco is, I mean, the projection system says he repeats last year and he was a great player last year. And somehow he's getting docked here. Um, you know, and projection systems are typically negative Nancy's. So, yeah. um, it's, it's pretty crazy to see. Um, and as far as like stat cast data goes, freaking crazy. Um, launch angle jump, uh, exit velocity jump, barrel percentage jump. Um, you know, there, there's, I was talking about, um, I was talking about Brandon Lau in the last one, talking about 30 home run uh, pop in his bat. Um, Polanco's got it too. And, and then you add, you know, the 10 stolen bases and, and a 290 average. I mean, the guy hits for, for great average, yeah. like 280, 290. Holy crap. I mean, you're getting that 19th shortstop off the board. Um, that, that's looking like a 13th round pick. Um, that's going to be huge in your middle infield spot. Um, you know, and, and if you're in leagues that allow trading and he makes a jump like that, it, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, shop around some of your, your, uh, your other guys. Uh, I don't know. Just having a guy like that, I, I think he's getting incredibly undervalued right now. Yeah, and I love the Polanco pick. That's uh that's one of the guys I was actually looking at as well. So glad I, I shied away <laughs> so you didn't snag two of my guys. Oh, but man. uh yeah, I, I uh I loved what he did last year and I definitely think that that he's gonna get right back at it again this year. So solid pick. Um my undervalued player right now is Mr. Gene Segura, uh, a bit of a homer pick. Uh, not gonna lie, but uh, I mean, look, he it said he lost 14 pounds. You know, he credits it to better sleeping and uh, not drinking as much whiskey, uh, or or no longer drinking whiskey. Uh, he's off my board. So that, that's that's a bit disappointing. I, I found that out after I wrote his how, name how down. Does, how do, how does um, this fantasy six pack? Vote off a vote for a guy who's not drinking anymore. I don't know. Anyway, just kidding. Um, kudos it said not drinking whiskey. He could still be drinking others to compensate for his lacking whiskey intake. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but um, I, I mean, his first season in Philly was was pretty good overall. Um, you know, it's 79 runs, 12 homers is right. Pretty much in line with what he'd been doing the past few years. Um, the runs is down a little bit. Uh, ribbies is up, you know, walks is right in line. Strikeouts is right in line. Stolen bases was down. Um, you know, I I just don't know if, if he's as much of a runner anymore. Um, plus Philly just doesn't really run. So if they could fix that, that would be nice. Uh, and his average was down, you know, about 20 points from, from the previous three years. But, um, you know he he's going to be playing around around the diamond this year. He's going to be playing at second. He's going to be playing at at third. Uh, I doubt he'll really actually be playing it short, even though he has the eligibility um, now that they have Didi. So uh, maybe a fill in day here and there uh, if Didi's off. But you know, I just think that he's gonna he's gonna get the playing time. Um, they, they're still waiting on Alec Baum, so. You know, I, I see him more as third, and then they're going to put Kingery, whose natural position is second base, over at second. Um, you know, but I think the two of them are just going to bounce back and forth between the two. So uh, I, I just like the upside. I, I think Philly's going to come out and, and and really surprise some people this year. Hopefully, your your stupid Braves, Tyler. 
<laughs> Shots Just fired. Kidding. Friendly rivalry. As he wears the Oreo shirt. Anyway, uh, so let's finish things <laughs> off here. I've got my undervalued player, and it is Paul DeJong. Uh, look, not not a sexy player by any means, Like, every, but everybody really overlooks it about how good he was last year. 30 home runs, 97 runs scored. Yeah, only 78 RBI. Um, but the 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 average really killed you last year. But his bad bit was extremely low, two fifty nine. Um, I expect that to jump back up to you know kind of at least where it was in twenty eighteen uh, when he was at two eighty eight, which still isn't great. Um, but uh, you know we we've seen him in in years before that be you know in the in the mid three hundreds. So. I think he has it in him to get back into that. Um, but for a guy going in the 20s for shortstops, like the early 20s for shortstops, you could potentially get 30. You're talking about negative Nancy's for all the projections, right, Tyler? The projections love him. <laughs> They're giving him 30 home run power again. <laughs> like, you can get 30 home run power for, like, nothing. <laughs> Seriously? I'll take him every day. Um at that point in the draft, you get a 250 average. Who cares? <laughs> so you're getting 30 home runs. I'll, I'll take it. Like that's that's a no brainer to me. Like Paul DeJong's on, you know, highlighted heavy in all my draft boards because he's just being completely forgotten about. So, all right, man, Tyler. That is all we got for the show. I want to thank you so much for coming on. I always enjoy talking with you. Um, go everybody. Go on the site. Read the uh, second and his third base preview. Um, and to, you know, unfortunately, he can't join us next week for the third base preview, so we're bringing on somebody else for that. But uh, Tyler, before um, before you go, let everybody know where they can find you on the internet and uh, that kind of good stuff, man. Sure. Uh, well, I think you said most of it there. Um, yeah, on Fantasy Six Pack, of course, great place to write. And um, on Twitter at the Real Wody, um, where I retweet random shit all day, and um, <laughs> that's that's what I do. Good so, stuff, man. Yeah, happy to be on the show. Appreciate it, guys. Yep, good stuff, man. Absolutely, man. Good all talking right. to you. Cool. Have a good night, Tyler. All right. So, AJ, uh, I think that's pretty much it for me, man. I don't know if you got anything else to add. I guess the one thing actually I did forget to mention this early in the show, but like you know the Yankees <laughs> pitchers are just you know, falling off the wagon, man. There's, there's like uh, we got news last week that Paxton was going to be out for like you know six to eight weeks, something like that, with a back surgery, which is bad news. And then today we hear Severino is dealing with the forearm injury that held him out or that was bothering him since Game Three of the ALCS. So. Who knows what's going to happen in New York, man? Because they already had um, Domingo German, you know, suspended or whatever for for half the year. So not looking good for the Yankees. Uh, Cole Cole pitches four hundred and seventy yeah. innings uh, <laughs> on three days rest sure. every every week. Yeah, so, it's yeah. Uh, it's August, and they're still complaining about uh, twenty seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So. That's my prediction. So. <laughs> we were robbed, damn it. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got for the show. Join us next week as we cover our third base preview. That's the only position we will do. Um, another deep one. Lots of questions, lots of players to cover. Uh, so tune in and we will see you then.